this is a special rock that has can you see it for yourself do you realize what this is okay do you see all the subtle little scratch marks on it those rocks that are crushed under the huge weight of the glaciers they um, they act like an abrasive they carve grooves into the underlying rock the little tiny pebbles and sand and grit and even the big rocks um, they are crushed underneath the weight of the solid glacier and pushed along and they carve into the, the bedrock underneath it. This is the fossil that my next door neighbor Craig found and this is just a beautiful fossilized small colony of coral. This is not Ordovician. This is not local to Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, this is Devonian. Not exactly certain the exact species. I'm going to give you some close-ups of all the little tiny chambers. You can find Devonian, Devonian aged uh, fossils from afar, from as far away as Canada, right here. Here's the back side. This is a whole bryzoan, again that's similar to coral. All the little arms are uh, embedded, they're sediments in between all the arms. You've seen reefs like modern day coral. Same idea, except it's all filled in with rock and it's all been smoothed over. Here's another whole colony. This has been rounded again by the river. Sediments tumbled. This is the one that my neighbor found, and this is the one that I found. Same species, a little bit smaller. Big difference is it's very, very worn down and eroded. So it's tumbled even more. Might have been a smaller colony to begin with. But you can see the, uh, the crystalline chambers of this little coral, Devonian coral. A little bit smoother, a lot smoother than the other one. Still a thing of beauty though. Here's another small bryzoan colony. Whole and river worn. And the erratic fossils as well. Um, once they become wet, they're much more stunning. Very beautiful, speckled erratic rocks just beautiful over to the right click the description and there will be links to uh, rock identification this is olivine it's a green rock it is precambrian in age and this one has some uh, notice the v-shaped uh, the v-shaped veins of another mineral intrusive mineral This rock is uh, nearly black. It has some other minerals within it. This is wonderful. I love this one. This was olivine with uh, intrusive granite. That is, the granite's pink, pinkish reddish, and the olivine's green. So it's a real nice juxtaposition of uh, contrast of color there. This is a really nice orange and black one. It has a lot of black minerals within it. I guess that's mica, but I'm not certain. The black would be mica. This is a very crystalline, white crystalline. It's not pure white, but we've got some bands. We've got some bands through it as well. This is another olivine rock. With, uh, 
a white mineral, white colored mineral interspaced throughout. It's really nice. Another little mini work of art. It makes beautiful uh, paperweights or decorate flower pots or aquariums or your yard. This is dolomite and has some really nice uh, horizontal layers. This, the, uh, the bands. And it has some crystal evaporates, I've been told. I'm not certain what this one is, but it's full of holes. This was a horn coral that we found here in our own neighborhood, and you, you normally can't find horn coral in our fossil formation. So this was pushed in from maybe 50 miles away river rock with uh, cephalopod and snail shells. See the chambers they've been cut through. You're seeing the edge of the shells uh, just as like a linear line. The features and detail have been totally smoothed over. So this is smooth to the touch just revealing the chambers. This is the cephalopod shell here, the squid like shell. This is another river rock of local fossils. Again, just smooth as a marble. And you can see all the different uh, crinoid stems. And what's unusual about this one, crinoid stems are usually abundantly found that are round. This has a lot of the uh, pentagon-shaped crinoid stems, which means it's Iocrinus crinoid. Here's another uh, granite, a little bit of olivine mixed in as well. Not much olivine, but just enough. There's the green there. There's the green. Another worn smooth river rock with beautiful revealing lines of clamshells and snail shells, brachiopods. And right here, recognize that? Cephalopod shell. Just the bare bone minimal, minimal uh, pencil outline of it almost. And it's in white against contrasting tan rock. These are snail shells in the river rock as well, but they're a little bit higher. They're not polished smooth, so there's a little bit of relief to them. That is, they're three-dimensional. Look on the side. You can see they stick up just a little bit, so they have not been worn as smoothly as the other rocks. So it's caught in the act of being uh, smoothed over. Here's a horn coral seen with the uh, cut right down the middle. This one is pristine. This one's worn down quite a bit. This one's worn down the most and it's almost unrecognizable unless you very carefully look at the look for the chamber openings. This one's some type of sandstone. Here's Bryzoan colony mixed in with some uh, crinoid stems. Worn smooth by the river. A tumbled bryzoan rock, lots of bryzoan fragments. This is smooth, almost as smooth as a marble, smooth as glass almost. No rough edges. Jumbled and tumbled bryzoans. This was the very best uh, snail examples I've found to date that's been of a river rock with the uh, shell totally cut through the middle. And notice how big this is a very big, very tall spires for local Cincinnati rocks. Here's my thumb for size comparison. This is the largest Devonian coral I have yet to find. I'm guessing it's about four inches. This is the dry version. Okay, I've wetted it now, and you can see the difference in color. See the bands of, uh, or it's crystalline. 